Yes, everybody, time now for another edition of uh, Truth, Justice, in the NBA. Um, as we give you another show for Sunday, uh, May the uh, 17th of 2015. And, yes, we'll be talking about the uh, Golden State Warriors and um, finally have an opportunity to talk about um, how they were able to put away the uh, Memphis Grizzlies thanks to the MVP Steph Curry. Of course, we're going to begin the show with the improbable comeback made complete on Sunday from the Toyota Center in Houston where Rockets head coach Kevin McHale knew a thing or two about a team being down three games to one in the playoffs and winning the series. We saw that uh, way back when, if you're about my age, which I'm in my 40s, <clears throat> when I was just about 10 years old. Uh, back in 1981, one of the first members I have of the NBA watching uh, games on CBS was Philadelphia-Boston. Game number seven when Boston, who was down three games to one, forced the seventh game and had to withhold one final Philadelphia um, attempt to win the game when Boston was uh, up by a point and Philadelphia was inbounding and their play went awry. And Kevin McHale, who was a part of that 1981 team along with one of the greatest players of all time, uh, Larry Bird, ended up winning the game and then they beat, coincidentally, the Houston Rockets that year four games to two for the uh, championship, which for McHale and Bird was their first. And, of course, McHale went on to win two more, known as one of the greatest power forwards of all time because McHale, when, when he was in the paint, he was nearly unstoppable. You had to foul him or just give him the bucket, or sometimes you ended up fouling him and he'd make the bucket. McHale had, you know, a 1,000 moves, probably had 2,000 moves in the paint. He was just unstoppable, one of the great power forwards um, to ever play the game, of course, in the Hall of Fame. Now we fast forward three decades later. As a coach, McHale knew that even though they were down three games to one, needed to make some adjustments in game five. They did. And, of course, the big one, as I mentioned before, Josh Smith starting, Terrence Jones, who was starting, coming off the bench, and the move was beneficial for both players, both more effective. And, of course, the game six improbable comeback down 19 in the third, uh, late in the third, as a matter of fact, and thus turning that game around with a 40-point fourth quarter. Game seven, it appeared that Houston picked up right where they left off from, getting off to a terrific start, and the Clippers looking like they had a Game 6 hangover, even though the game was from uh, three days before. James Harden, who um, hardly played in the fourth quarter because he struggled shooting and still had the effects of the flu, well, in this case, he was fully healthy, and it showed with a monstrous effort of 31 points, um, including a dozen in the opening quarter. Again, the Clippers, you know, the, the big thing about this game that surprised me the most, especially from a Doc Rivers team, was that they just did not hustle at all when it came to defensive transition. I mean, they weren't getting back. They were giving up uncontested shots. Houston was the more aggressive team. And, again, it was an overall great effort, which we'll get into when we'll talk about the other players in just a couple of minutes. But, but the Rockets really just asserted their will on the Clippers, who looked shell-shocked from just a few days before after looking like they had Game 6 in the bag up by nearly 20 with, with a quarter and change left. It just wasn't the same Clippers team that we saw in games one, and especially in games three and four, in which they just took Houston to town. In this case, the Clippers were, were taking um, a lot of long-range shots. In fact, they took a ton of three-point shots in this game and uh, made you know only seven of 28 for 25%. Another stat that just, will just blow you away, and this is proof as to why Houston won this game with James Harden you know, being the leader of the team, um, doing everything he could to help them win this game seven was he took the ball to the bucket as frequently as he could, and other players did as well. Free throw shooting, how about this? The Rockets had 41 attempts from the stripe, made 31 of them, which for them is a pretty high percentage because they hadn't been shooting well from the free throw line. First, only 17 free throw attempts. They went 11 of 17, but the obvious stat, 41 attempts for the Rockets, only 17 for the Clippers. That tells you who the more aggressive team was. And you really didn't see the best in the Clippers until they were down by about 20 points um, with about, uh, I would say, about, maybe about uh, the halfway mark of the fourth quarter. And then they got the lead actually down to eight with just over a minute to go and actually had a chance at a three-point shot to get it down to five, but no go. And Houston then closed out the game on the mini run and won. Now, Probably the key moment in this game to me, if there was really one that stood out, was when the Clippers down by 10 at the break, which was a miracle considering, you know, how Houston just outplayed them and outshot them, was that the Clippers um, early in the third quarter um, got the lead down 
to uh, three thanks to an 11 4 run um, when the score was 60 to 57. But then a 23 to 9 run changed everything as the Rockets continue to shoot well. And how about Josh Smith? You know, starting for the third straight time, 15 points, not bad at all in this game. And then Corey Brewer, you know, coming off the bench, 11 points. And Terrence Jones in his new role as a reserve, you know, he didn't shoot just, just out, out of this world, but he did contribute with eight points. And Papo Prigioni in the game, only four points. But he made his contributions as a point guard today um, doing the little things, okay? How about no turnovers and defensively, you know, being a menace against the Clippers? Three steals, okay? Or three, we missed three steals, but no turnovers, okay? No turnovers and three steals. Not a bad day's work for, for that guy um, who played a little more than 20 minutes in the contest. For the Clippers, if I told you before the game that Blake Griffin would have 27 points, 11 rebounds, and Chris Paul would get 26, that DeAndre Jordan would get 16 points and 17 boards for the league leader in rebounds, DeAndre Jordan, and Jamal Crawford would have 17 points, even though. He missed 12 shots in the game. You probably think the Clippers would be in, in good shape, okay? You thought, they, thought they'd be okay. But the bottom line was that that was pretty much it for LAC. I mean, Austin Rivers, again, struggling off the bench, two points. Matt Barnes, you know, as appropriate as it would be because for the most part he was a no factor, um, you know, in both series, you know, with the uh, with the Spurs and against the Rockets. Had some moments, but for the most part ineffective. And in this case, he was really ineffective. And, you know, that, that, that's really one of those things. He only got 22 minutes. In fact, uh, Jamal Crawford played more minutes than he did. Th this is just one of those blown opportunities by the Clippers. You don't want to take anything away from Houston because, you know, they deserve the series after, um, after the 3-1 deficit that they found themselves in with Houston. But at the same time, the Clippers are going to be thinking what might have been. And for Doc Rivers, he becomes the first coach in, um, in league history to lose two series after being up three games to one. It happened back um, back in the day when he was coaching um, the Celtics when they when they lost to uh, Detroit back in the 2000s. 3-1, blew that one. 3-1 today, blew that one as well. So for the Rockets, they move on. They move on. They don't have much time to recover. They're going to be playing the league's best team in the Warriors who won 67 games this year, and they only have two days to get ready for it because game one will be Tuesday night from Oakland. Warriors, by the way, won all four regular season games. We'll talk about Golden State in a few seconds. But maybe that's what Houston wants, okay? They, they faced the odds all year, so don't count them out. But you would think that Golden State, with more rest and also, too, um, playing great offense and defense all around, it's going to be pretty hard for Houston to pull off another one. But, again, Kevin McHale and Bunch, you got to congratulate them for, you know, not at all quitting. For the Clippers, free agents, well, several of them. Of course, the big one, DeAndre Jordan. I'm sure the Clippers will be offering a max deal this summer, um, which would be, um, I might make sure I got this right, five years, $109 million, that's 21.8 mil. But, of course, with those um, you know, with those lucrative TV deals coming up the following year, maybe Jordan goes somewhere else, signs for one year, and then really, really gets paid after that. But number one priority as far as free agents, Doc Rivers says, is to sign DeAndre Jordan. I doubt if Glenn Baby or I call him Glenn Baby, but how about Big Baby, how about uh, no big deal at all in Glenn Davis? Not very effective. He's a free agent. i got to think they'll part ways from him, but but you never know. Austin Rivers, you know, he's a free agent, but remember he's the coach's son. It'd be a pretty hard thing to cut your son, but you know who knows what direction they'll be going in. And Hito Turkoglu is about 500 years old. Not really, okay, if you're a big fan of his, but um, non-factor um, for, for much of the season. Um, his best years are behind him playing in a reserve role, and hardly getting any playing time at all. Talking about Golden State and Memphis as we wrap things up, if you had a chance to watch the game, you saw Golden State get up to a blazing start. They got up by 15 early. Know anything about Golden State basketball, you know that um, they are 52-0 in the regular season. They were anytime they got a 15-point lead. Um, the barrage of three-point shooting and good defense it just makes it almost impossible to come back. Even a harder obstacle for Memphis was Tony Allen, who missed Game 5 with an injury. He tried to give it a go for Game Number 6, but only played five minutes, so he got pulled. He did everything he could, just couldn't give everything uh, that the Grizzlies were asking. So, had to make an adjustment and give Memphis credit for at least, you know, doing a good job controlling the ball. In the game, only three turnovers, and I thought what really helped Memphis, they got to the free throw line 
and they also, too, controlled the turnovers. Golden State had 12. That allowed um, the, the uh, Grizzlies to chip away at the lead. Late in the third, the key play in the game, Grizzlies down by five um, as the seconds, final seconds of the third quarter wind down. Sean Livingston um, gets in the way of Jeff Green. Memphis Benz at that time thought there was going to be a call. There wasn't. Ball was loose. Steph Curry picks it up. He throws it from 62 feet away, swish, nothing but net from near his own free throw line, and buries it. And that really took the wind out of the FedEx Arena sale because it could have been a three-point game, maybe a two-point game, you know, where at least free throws attempted by Green. And who knows if the, the right call was made. But, but we do know one thing. It went from a five-point lead to an eight-point lead, and the Grizzlies needed every break they could get. They didn't get one. It was a big, big play in favor of Golden State. And the uh, Warriors at the point of the game, 108-95, thanks to the play of Steph Curry. For the most part, 32 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds for the MVP. Um, again, we, we, we see the performance, too, of Green adding 16 in the game. Clay Thompson, you get 20 from him. That's good. And he, again, contributed for that trio of Green, Thompson, and Curry, who uh, combined in the game for a total of 68 points. Andre Iguodala, who becomes a free agent at the end of the year, off the bench. Guy like what he did with nine points. All of his points coming from behind the three-point strike. In fact, the biggest stat in the game in the favor of Golden State, three-point shooting. Three-pointers made. Fifteen on the night for Golden State, including a whopping eight threes from Stephen Curry. Memphis only had four three-pointers, which came from two players. The reserve, the veteran Vince Carter, and then the other one was starter in Courtney Lee. Each of them had a pair of threes, but that was it as far as three-point shooting for the uh, Grizzlies. And Marcus Gasol, he'll be a big-time free agent name, although I got to think he's going to stay with Memphis. He loves it there, but you know teams like the Spurs are really going to be wanting his services, so we'll see what happens, but I got to think Gasol will stay. He made just over 15 mil last year, um, this past year, for Memphis in the game. Um, you know, he 7 of 23. Yeah, not, not one of his better performances. Um Zach Randolph, 5 of 14. So those two combined in the game, the front line, um, the best front line players for the Grizz, a combined 12 of 37. And naturally against Golden State or against most teams in the playoffs, uh, 12 of 37 won't cut the mustard. Um, but this was just one of those nights where Golden State wanted to you know, set the tone early, and I thought they did that. And I thought their defense was just as inter- instrumental in games 4, 5, and 6 when they were down two games to one. And sweeping the next three as their offense was. So it's going to be Memphis. Got to say goodbye to them. And not only is Marcus Gasol a free agent um, at the end of the season, but also, too, is uh, Jeff Green, player option on him, 9.2 mil. But I got to think Green has to believe that right now um, this is the team for him. He seems like a perfect fit for them. We'll see, though, how the uh, backup uh, point guard, I guess you could say he's the third string pack, you know, point guard, uh, for the Grizz, you know, behind Conley and behind uh, Hugo, that's Nick Kalathis. Didn't even make $1 million this past year. Um, he's a restricted free agent, so Kalathis might be thinking higher money elsewhere. And Costa Kufus, a uh, reserve of the former Denver Nugget, made $3 million this past year. He's unrestricted, so his future, I think, is in jeopardy uh, for the uh, Grizzlies. But, of course, Mark Gasol is the big name uh, coming up this uh, summer as far as trying to get him resigned for Memphis. Um, so that will do it for this edition of Truth, Justice, in the NBA. A reminder that the Cleveland and Atlanta Eastern Conference Final Game 1 will be Wednesday from Atlanta's Phillips Arena. As we mentioned a couple of times before, at least, Houston at Golden State. Two survivors from the West will meet in Oakland Game 1 on Tuesday, which will be ESPN for the Western Conference, and TNT will have the East, and, of course, ABC will have the NBA Finals coming up next month. Thanks for watching, everyone.